Of course, yesterday was the Super Bowl, a modern day version of the ancient bread and circuses from ancient Rome, a media manufactured event to occupy and pacify the time and attention of the general public who apparently can't think of anything to entertain themselves or occupy their time on the weekends other than turning on the television and watching mainstream media. More on that in a moment. A lot of people love to watch the commercials because they're filled with celebrities, which I'll also address, so bear with me. But this year, Old Joe decided to release a Super Bowl ad of his own. And it didn't air during the big game, but the American people should see it because, well, it's absolutely idiotic. It's Super Bowl Sunday. If you're anything like me, you like to be surrounded by a snack or two while watching the big game. You know, when buying snacks for the game, you might have noticed one thing. Sports drinks bottles are smaller. The bag of chips has fewer chips, but they're still charging it just as much. Actually, they're charging more. And as an ice cream lover, what makes me the most angry is that ice cream cartons have actually shrunk in size, but not in price. I've had enough of what they call shrinkflation. It's a ripoff. Some companies are trying to pull a fast one by shrinking the products little by little and hoping you won't notice. We've all noticed. Everybody has noticed shrinkflation. But finally, the White House has caught wind of it. And old Joe has a solution. Wait for it. Give me a break. The American public is tired of being played for suckers. I'm calling on companies to put a stop to this. Let's make sure businesses do the right thing now. So old Joe is calling on the price of food to go up. And there are only three ways to avoid shrinkflation, and none of them are going to happen. One is for the companies to raise the prices instead of just shrinking the product, which isn't going to happen. Two would be for them to start putting poorer quality ingredients in the products to bring the cost down. But I don't even know if they can do that because they've already substituted most of the food for chemicals. Three would be for the Federal Reserve to stop printing dollars, to stop causing inflation, to stop putting so many dollars in circulation, which is causing the price of everything to go up. While the Federal Reserve isn't actually a government agency, they are an independent cartel. I mean, uh, independent banking network. They have been collaborating with the Biden administration in order to continue the, well, the destruction of the U.S. dollar. And so once again, the Democrats are accusing others of doing the exact same thing that they themselves are guilty of. And while he did put out that cringeworthy commercial, he skipped the traditional pre-Super Bowl presidential interview for the second year in a row because his staff can't allow him to sit in front of a camera at this point, and he would trust the mainstream media to edit the thing together to try to make him look good. But CNN says he has a good excuse. Biden is skipping a Super Bowl interview for the second year in a row. It's part of a larger media strategy. He's got a strategy, all right to not be in front of a camera. But CNN's Oliver Darcy says that it's because Joe Biden thinks that the American people are just tired of politics and he wanted to let them just enjoy the game. A game which George Orwell noted in his classic novel, 1984, has a purpose. Football, beer, and above all gambling filled up the horizons of their minds, meaning the general public, to keep them in control was not difficult. And if you know anything about my work, you know that I'm consistent. Unlike virtually every mainstream conservative pundit, talk show host, and politician who have slowly and steadily been moving to the left, afraid to talk about certain issues now that the times have changed, I'm like a rock. And many of the things that I've been talking about for over 15 years are now finally starting to work their way into the mainstream now that the insanity has boiled over. And here's a little blast from the past, which is and always will be an evergreen video. It's titled, The Super Bowl is Stupid, that I recorded and posted 10 years ago, back in 2014. I just watched the Super Bowl for the commercials. They're so funny. <laughs> also, you need a billion dollar beer company to entertain you. You look forward to a cavity causing crap in a can commercial, known as soda, to the peon public to make you laugh. You've become so overstimulated, so brain damaged from the mentally enslaving mainstream media that you look forward to having these billion dollar companies entertain you with a 30 second commercial. Beer, soda, Doritos, junk food, garbage. This is your entertainment. 
this is what has happened to America. While you're watching a bunch of men running around in tights chasing a ball. You know, my dog is as easily entertained as most football fans. Hey, look, he's got the ball. <laughs> oh, yay, he's got the oh, ball. Oh, yay, the other team's got the ball. Oh, no, they got the ball. Yay, the ball. They're chasing the ball. They're chasing the ball. That's, that's your entertainment, America. That is your bread and circus. It's just incredible. I, it, it's amazing the power of the mainstream media to have mentally enslaved an entire nation. This is their number one priority. They can name the stats and who's playing, and who's out injured, and all the different statistics, but most of these people don't even know who the vice president is. Most of these people just probably can't even name their own state capital, but they know the quarterbacks on all the teams, and they know what cities and who's playing what. And, oh, your priorities are not a whack at all, are they? Oh, you're a great American. No, no, you're the reason this country's failing. You are a mentally enslaved mainstream media watching brain damaged buffoon that is yelling and screaming about some people chasing a ball. That's, that's, that's your entertainment. Man chasing a ball at a field, like, like, like your animals. You yell and scream if there's a bad call by a ref, but you've never yelled and scream at a city council meeting. You've never yelled, even made a call, phone call to your congressperson. I'm sure you don't even know who they are, but you just keep watching the Super Bowl and you just keep wondering why this country's failing. You just keep watching men in tights chasing a ball on a field. I just wonder what happened to America. Well, what happened is, among many other things, the Super Bowl starts off now with the Black National Anthem because the actual National Anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, offends millions and millions of black people. So now at NFL games, including the Super Bowl, they bring a bunch of black people out to sing their national anthem. And by the way, that is the unofficial name. That's not just what detractors are calling it. Here's Entertainment Tonight, which proudly posted the song. Andra Day sings the black national anthem at Super Bowl. The actual song title is Lift Every Voice and Sing, and I'm sure it's a fine song, but it has no purpose being played at sporting events, and it has no purpose being called the Black National Anthem. What is it, the National Anthem of Liberia? From what I've seen, and I did not watch the game, I'm talking about what I've seen reported in the media, there weren't really that many politically themed commercials or political messages during the halftime show like we've seen in previous years. There are a lot of people talking about this bizarre supposed Christian commercial, which I would describe as promoting woke Christianity, which is an embarrassment and an abomination, trying to depict modern day versions of the story of Jesus washing his disciples' feet as a symbol to show that he is a servant. And here's a cop washing a black man's feet. This scene looks like a white man washing the feet of a Native American in an apologetic gesture, obviously, for stealing their poor land and building this amazing country on top of it. This one of a woman washing the feet of another woman who presumably just got an abortion at the family planning clinic. They didn't want to get sued and use Planned Parenthood, but... That's what that is. That is an abortion clinic. You can see the protesters out there protesting against it. A Catholic priest washing the feet of, well, another gay man. And it concludes that Jesus didn't teach hate. Well, he certainly didn't endorse people's sins. In fact, he says in Matthew 10, 35, For I have come to set man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. In Matthew 12, 34, he said, You brood of vipers. How can you who are evil say anything good? So this organization, which is called He Gets Us, paid millions of dollars to air this corny ad during the Super Bowl, this woke Christianity commercial. Instead of investing that money in what could have been probably hundreds of thousands of Bibles that they then could have just handed out to random people on the streets or maybe clothed the poor or fed the hungry, but... They feel good about themselves putting a commercial on during the Super Bowl because I'm sure that's going to lead people to Jesus. And I'm sure this is the kind of pastor that this organization works with. God is gay. God is a lesbian. God is trans. God is gender non-binary. God is straight. God is cisgender. God will spit you out of his mouth, you abomination. 
The media obsession with Taylor Swift has reached unprecedented levels. This from the Associated Press, not Entertainment Tonight or TMZ. The Associated Press, Taylor Swift reached LAX in her journey from Tokyo to the Super Bowl. Online sleuths say, this is from USA Today, it's happening. Taylor Swift arrives at Super Bowl 58 to support boyfriend Travis Kelsey. This from Newsweek, Taylor Swift arrived at Super Bowl and introduced Jason Kelsey. For those who have been fortunate enough not to have heard about this ridiculousness, that is Taylor Swift's boyfriend's brother. So she introduced him to rapper Ice Spice. Brace yourselves for the cringe because this is Ice Spice. <laughs> Apparently one of the most popular rappers in America today. You thought I was feeling you? No. That nigga munch. Nigga, either he ate it for lunch. Bitch, I'm a baddie, I get what I want like. You thought I was feeling you? No, I was feeling you. That nigga munch. Nigga, either he ate it for lunch. Bitch, I'm a baddie, I get what I want like. That's literally the whole song. She repeats those lines over and over and over again. And... This video has 55 million views and 683,000 thumbs up. 683,000 people watched this and liked this. And now Ice Spice is such a popular rapper that she was at the Super Bowl and part of Taylor Swift's entourage. We are beyond idiocracy. There are no words to describe the current state of popular culture in America or politics for that matter, because old Joe's interns posted this after the Super Bowl, which apparently is the dark Brandon meme. The Democrats have tried to appropriate the let's go Brandon meme, thinking that it's cool, calling him dark Brandon. Don't even try to make any sense of it. It doesn't make any sense. And so they posted this showing old Joe as Dark Brandon with the laser eyes last night with the caption, just like we drew it up. This is apparently their way of trying to mock conservatives for noticing the media manufactured drama surrounding Taylor Swift who ultimately will end up endorsing old Joe again, just like she did back in 2020 becoming really a powerful asset of the Democrats. Don't even try to make any sense of this because as you know, the left can't meme. And I'm sure that they can't come up with any decent political t-shirts either. Like my new, sorry, no vacancy, deport them all shirt, which you should order from my online store at markdice.com or click the link in the description below and check it out.